Hello everyone and welcome to my first devlog. For the past month I've been working on a prototype for this first person puzzle platformer game. Don't really have a good name for it yet since that will depend on the story and I'm still working on fleshing that out properly. But for now let's call it Brig. I'm going to start with some background on myself and how I got here, but if you're not interested in that you can feel free to skip ahead. I put some markers in the video so you can just get to the gameplay itself. Also I'm a little sick right now so apologies if I don't sound so great. So a little bit about myself, I'm a software engineer living in Seattle and I've loved video games ever since I was a little kid, starting back playing video games on floppy disks like XCOM, uh, Command and Conquer, uh, as well as first person shooters like Quake back when uh, you were using dial up and you'd get disconnected if your mom tried to use the phone. And then I fell in love with the story and action of games like Metal Gear Solid and when I got my first console, the Xbox, why I was crazy about Halo. Uh, from there, World of Warcraft came out. I spent probably way too much time playing this video game as a kid. And I, I can't forget Counter-Strike. I, I think probably this is my most played game as a child growing up. In recent years, I've put a lot of hours into games like Tarkov, which if you've played, you know it's quite a love-hate relationship. Right now though, I'm mostly playing Destiny 2, which is a really great game for a lot of reasons and definitely an inspiration for this new game I'm working on. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. For the past couple years, I've been looking at how to make games in Unity, focusing on mobile games, considering it's a large market, and it's easier as a solo developer to make something smaller scale on mobile. Unfortunately, I wasn't really finding much success here, so I decided to switch to working on PC games, which is what I really love. So one day while watching Thomas Brush, uh, his channel I highly recommend if you're a game developer, his videos are really informative and also hilarious, uh, but I found inspiration while he was showing off his game Father, which I is now called Happy Hotel. Uh, inspired me to work on this idea for a game that sort of plays like Half-Life but has a lot of the dark moody themes of a game like Control. So I started working on a prototype for this and very quickly realized that my art skills are probably not up to par for a game like this that's so heavily dependent on the mood and the atmosphere and the art. But I did make this cool render in Blender which I'm pretty proud of. So I started from scratch in a new game that wasn't so dependent on the art and I was trying to build a multiplayer co-op shooter using Neo FPS and Fishnet and as you can see here, I did eventually get things to work, but this took a lot of time and a lot of pain and struggling. And I was thinking maybe even this was probably a little too advanced for me to work on right now. So starting over again, I tried to simplify things even further and I had this idea for a chaotic multiplayer golf game where everyone's sort of hitting the same golf ball at the same time, which I thought, you know, should be easy, right? It, it wasn't, it was, it was still full of so many issues. So starting over, I knew I had to lay down some rules to make sure the next project started on the right foot. So first of all, it had to be single player, because I realized networking was still too complicated for me right now. It also needed to not be dependent on high quality art and story, because I knew that those were not my strengths. And despite all this, it should still be fun and engaging. So at this point, I definitely felt a little lost, because despite being able to point countless hours into the same old monotonous games when I was a kid, as an adult, I'm definitely getting a little harder to please becoming a lot more cynical and jaded and definitely my attention span is being eroded by things like YouTube, Twitch, Reddit, and TikTok. And my mental health isn't really the best. Uh, I've been struggling with poor sleep for quite a while, which has a huge negative impact on your mood and focus. I also quit my last job due to stress and burnout, and at this point I'm wondering if maybe even game development is right for me. I know I shouldn't expect success on my first try, but I've tried and failed at game development multiple times, and that is definitely starting to take its toll. But enough doom and gloom, let's brighten the mood a little bit. So, starting work on ideas for a new game, I was thinking about how I really like playing Brigida in Overwatch. It's a lot of fun to jump around, smack things, and dash with the shield, which is actually why, for now, I've been calling this game Brig. I also really enjoyed the puzzling and platforming in games like Destiny 2 and Portal. And when I was working on the character controllers for that co-op shooter game, I was really excited by the gravity shifting mechanic that this character controller offered. So I thought it'd be a really cool way to make a puzzle platformer that incorporates this ability. So I had a couple main themes when starting working on this. First of all, I didn't want it to be primarily a shooter. I wanted some combat, but I didn't want it to be a game about pumping bullets into bullet sponges. Also, I didn't want the movement to be so fast that it turned to a sweaty, high-speed mess. I know that games like Ultra Kill are very highly regarded and a lot of people love them, but they're definitely a little too fast-paced for me. I mean, I can barely even follow what's going on in this video. 
With that said, I don't want my game to be too slow. I think some speed can be enjoyable. And I definitely know that one of my most fun memories I had playing Destiny 2 was doing the zero hour exotic mission to acquire the Outbreak Perfected Pulse Rifle, where you have to speed through a bunch of combat challenges and jumping puzzles trying to get to the end within a time limit. I do think that sort of pressure can definitely be entertaining. Other than that though, I don't really have a concrete design doc. Sorry, Thomas. And the reason for that is because I don't want to feel locked into an exact plan so early in development. I mean, I know that art and level design are not my strong suits, so I want to be flexible and involve the game as necessary to avoid myself from getting stuck or frustrated. This is also why I don't have a final name or really a story yet. I want those to sort of evolve with the gameplay as I'm developing it. And I've heard that Valve actually follows a similar design philosophy when developing some of their games. And I'm hoping this results in a better and more natural and cohesive end product. So now let's actually start talking about the development process for Brig. I started with this character controller, which if you're a developer in Unity and you're looking for a good character controller, I highly recommend this one. It's got a lot of great features, including different movement speeds in air and ground, slope stickiness, moving platforms, platform stickiness, and the cool gravity shifting mechanic I was talking about earlier. So to start, I wanted to adjust the movement. Uh, as you can see here, it's a little too floaty. Uh, you jump a little too high, too slow, and the movement's not quite as snappy as I'd like. So I increased the movement speed, decreased the jump height, and increased the gravity, and I feel like it's a definitely a lot tighter movement now. Next, I need to make some changes to the platform movement. So as you can see here, when you're on the platform, you do follow along with it. But when you jump, you sort of get disconnected from the motion here. And that's because the way it's implemented is that when you're in a trigger on the platform, you gain its additional movement speed. When you leave, you lose it. So to fix this, I made sure that when you jump off the platform, you inherit the velocity. So you maintain that speed while you're in midair. And now you can also see that when I jump off and the platform stops, I continue moving forward. And here, if we actually get onto a fast moving platform, you can see that I can use this mechanic to launch myself really far across. Unfortunately, this does result in a bug where if you collide with something while midair, you don't actually lose that velocity and you keep moving after you leave the collision. But to fix that, I just interpolate your momentum with your current velocity so that you stop. So next, since this game was inspired by Brigida, I definitely had to add a dash. My initial implementation involved just adding a decaying velocity component, but as you can see here, it didn't really decay as expected and I got sent flying across the map. My second attempt at implementing this instead tried to just move the position of the rigid body directly, which gave me better control over the movement, but as you can see, also just phased me through objects. So this wasn't working, I tried to return to the velocity solution and just use some complex math to detect when I'm colliding with something, but as you can see here, I'm sort of getting pushed off of objects when colliding with them. Eventually I realized it was my code for actually slowing down the movement from the platform jump that was causing this. So to avoid that, I basically just say while you're dashing, don't include the velocity in the momentum component. With that done, we moved on to double jump because every good platformer needs a double jump. And additionally, I wanted to add jump buffering because as you can see here in this example, I'm trying to jump just before reaching the end of this ledge, but I'm failing and I'm just falling. So to fix this, I added a little bit of time buffer. So when you leave the ground, the character controller still lets you use your ground-based jump. And this definitely felt much better. It's a lot less frustrating because it really is upsetting to try to get to the edge, try to jump and then not be allowed to do it. Next, we had crouching, which was pretty simple. Just changing the size of the collider and slowing your movement speed. And then after that, uh, another feature inspired by gameplay in Overwatch, I added a ground pound from Hammond, the ball character. Uh, so this basically just zeroes out all your velocity and then gives you a boost straight downward. And as you can see, it's this really horrible looking particle effect. Um, and this will be very useful in platforming puzzles where you need to stop at a certain position before flying into a danger. Additionally, as you can see here, I had a little physics explosion, so when you hit the ground, objects nearby go flying. To build upon some of the jumping, I also had this jump refresher, basically just a trigger that when you collide with, it will re-enable your jump, allowing you to continue jumping across large spaces. With the movement basically complete, I next wanted to work on world interactivity. So for example here, you can see me picking up and carrying around this cube. My initial implementation tried to use proper physics and forces with rigid bodies, and unfortunately that had a lot of issues. I don't have any footage of that here, unfortunately, but let's just say that trying to make things physically accurate in a video game is honestly not really the best idea. So instead I just parented the object to your character and allowed you to move it around that way. 
and this works most of the time, but unfortunately if the object is not a root element and has a parent, you'll see here that it actually gets sort of disconnected from your motion and lags behind your movement. The frustrating thing also is that even when I make the object completely unparented, sometimes it will still break and I'm not really quite sure why, so I could definitely use some advice here if you know what's going on. After that, I created this pressure plate that's connected to a door because, you know, we need some way to use these cubes in our world. So to keep things simple here is basically just a trigger that detects whether a U or a cube is on the object and sends an event off. And we use Dotween to animate this, which makes things really simple. I also added a simple switch, so you can just interact things on and off without using the cube. Moving on, uh, as I said, I do want combat in this game, but I want it to be a little bit more focused and precise rather than an intense, fast-paced bullet mayhem shooter. So I added this bow that you can shoot arrows with, uh, and it charges up and the arrows, you know, fly faster. And eventually I want to have a system where if you charge at the exact right amount of time, you'll sort of shoot this perfect shot that does extra damage. I also added some explosion uh, and particles and trail effects to the arrows when they collide with something. And here also, if you hit something with enough force, it'll even break it apart. But this game still is primarily a platformer, so I wanted to make sure that the combat has effects on your movement. So as you can see here, when I'm charging up the arrows, I actually slow down my movement speed. And this takes effect in air as well. And I think this will be really interesting in certain areas of platforming puzzles where you need to maintain your height a little longer to land on a platform that's just materializing or moving just under you. Of course, we need something to shoot with this bow, so I created this very simple enemy. Um, which follows you, tries to attack you, and if you hit him three times, he dies. But I do want combat to be a little bit more interesting than that, and I do want it to play on some of the physics and platforming. So maybe there's an enemy that you have to knock off a ledge, right? Because he's invulnerable to damage. And if he hits you three times, then you know you lose the HP and you die. So at this point, we have a bunch of mechanics set up, and now I need to put them all together to verify that this game is actually fun. And I struggle regularly with properly judging stuff like this. As I mentioned earlier, my mental health definitely is not perfect, and I regularly struggle with decision paralysis, not because everything sounds so great and I can't decide, but because everything sounds so boring and my brain convinces me nothing's worth doing. So I want to build a prototype level to give some friends to try, and if they say, yes, this is fun, give me more, then that gives me more motivation to keep going. I'm thinking about doing three chapters to this game, with the prototype representing part of the first chapter. My idea is that you sort of start in this boat, sailing to this remote island or temple, and either you're cleansing of evil spirits, or you're completing some sort of trial to earn the favor of the gods, I'm still not sure yet. So I've broken out this prototype into three parts. Part one starts a little visual exposition and some simple platforming. In part two, you get inside the temple and start introducing your activity with boxes, pressure plates, doors, moving platforms, etc. And then in part three, you get access to the bow, which allows you to shoot enemies to unlock doors and also shoot these little targets to activate platforms so you can cross certain areas. Additionally, I added uh, checkpoints because when the player gets killed by an enemy or if they fall off a platforming section, they need someone to respawn, and these trigger at certain points in the level. Initially, I also didn't really want to bother with audio for this prototype since I'm trying to build the MVP and determine if it's worth investing in further. But I realized that for some interactions, like a door opening after all the enemies are killed, it's not really obvious that you've completed the objective without an audio cue. So I added some sound effects for movement, charging and shooting the bow, doors, moving platforms, and hitting the arrow targets. So with all that complete, I sent it out to some of my friends and had them test it, and I was very happy to hear that they actually enjoyed it and wanted to play it more. So that was really great news because I got the confirmation that this game is actually fun and worth investing in. So now I'm committed to completing it. The next step is to add graphics. As I said, art's not really my expertise. So sooner rather than later, I need to confirm if I can actually handle doing the art for this kind of game. And if I find that I'm not able to produce the quality that I'm looking for, I need to consider if I want to hire somebody to do the art, which I'm not really keen on. I mean, I, I do enjoy making art and I want to improve my skills. And bringing on a new person is a huge risk, because I don't know anybody personally that I trust for this. So I'd have to recruit externally, and I'm worried about making the wrong decision and hiring the wrong person. Also, I need to produce more content for the demo. The current prototype is pretty short, uh, not, doesn't have that many puzzles, the platforming is a little too easy. The combat exists mostly just as an example and not as a proper challenge. I want to include a mini boss fight, where the combat, puzzle, platforming are all sort of combined into one cohesive experience. I also need to add a tutorial. 
I don't want to beat people over the head with instructions. You know, I prefer games that let me discover how to complete the challenge on my own. But I know that some people are more casual in their gaming, and so they might need some extra help. My idea is to have an internal voice for the main character that's presented to them after a user fails to solve an encounter multiple times and gives them hints on how they should proceed. I'll also need to include settings and controls so you can adjust resolution, display, key bindings, etc. But fortunately, Neo FPS already has this, so I just need to port it over to this project. Once that's all done, I need to reach out to publishers. As I mentioned, I quit my last tech job because of stress, so I'm currently unemployed. And I personally know that I don't really have the ability to seriously work on a game project while holding a full-time job. I definitely don't want to be one of those people that says, I've been working on this game for over five years. Ideally, I want to complete it in six months, so being reasonable will probably be more like 12 or 18. And I saved some money before I quit, but that will only last me a couple months. I need a publisher to help fund development of this project to help me bring it to completion. Also, I'm not really a marketing expert, and I don't want to do marketing. I want to make the game, not work on selling it. So I think a publisher will definitely be helpful there as well. Yeah, that's all I have for my first devlog. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, like everyone says, like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever, you know, try to trick YouTube into promoting this. Um, I definitely appreciate any feedback you guys have, either on the game itself or um, on the devlog. This is my first time trying to make a devlog, so I know it's probably not the highest quality. I definitely would love uh, some feedback in any of these areas as I'm definitely looking to improve and, and get better at this as I go. So thank you all for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next devlog.